So this is a fun one. I always like to say, fire your landlord, right? <laughs> stop paying your landlord's mortgage. So uh, everybody stop and say, well, what? why would I want to buy a house? Well, you're making your landlord rich. You're making those apartment complex uh, real estate investment trusts rich. So stop paying paying your landlord's mortgage. So let's jump into credit. And I'm going to pause here. And I do see a couple questions. And I've noted those as well. And we'll come back to those or follow up later. Anyway, so credit is always a fun topic. Is everyone excited about credit? Can I get some yays in the chat about credit? Everybody just hung up or dropped off, right? Don't want to talk about credit. I do not want to talk. No. Anyway, credit is a great topic, and uh, in our business, uh, we're very familiar with, and we have to become uh, experts in credit. So what does a credit score really mean, right? <clears throat> you see all these commercials. You're like, ah, oh, you know, you see the guys uh, standing around with credit scores on their, on their shirt. I'll tell you, it does not work that way. The credit score does not just float. There isn't some score associated with you floating out there in the ether. So... Uh, it is calculated instantaneously upon us pulling a credit report. But what does credit score actually do? It analyzes your past bill paying history to predict future behavior. So we're looking in the past to see what's going to happen in the future. We want to analyze uh, risk uh, uh, and uh, likelihood of repayment. That should say risk right there. So everyone playing out along at home. Um, make sure that you note that that should say risk, not future. So uh, uh, someone said, is this live? Well, it, it's obviously live because we would have fixed that mistake if it wasn't. So anyway, credit scores can be, uh, uh, you'll see for Fair Isaac and Company or FICO scores between 350 and 850. If you see someone say they have a 900 score, they might be using a different scoring algorithm. Uh, not the FICO or residential mortgage type scores. So higher scores, lower risk of default, uh, and uh, credit scores kind of summarizing your past bill paying history. Um, everyone should recognize that you're sort of born with a decent score and then you're allowed to screw it up. Uh, so someone that has a very um, Low or thin credit, uh, I'll say thin or, or short credit history, will often have a credit score somewhere between 680 and 720, somewhere around 700, give or take, and uh, some good payment history, and they'll bounce up above 720, someone with really good, excellent credit, 780 and above. In mortgages over 740, 760, there's not much advantage as far as the loan you can obtain, but there is uh, differences between... Uh, you know, 500, 580, 620, all the way up to 700 and above. So how do credit scores work? So we're going to kind of talk a little bit about the, the uh, main uh, five categories of how FICO scoring works. And again, FICO is a trademark of Fair Isaac and Company. But how do credit scores work? They're broken into... Um, into five main categories. Let me get the uh, the pen out here again. Uh, you've got, uh, oops, move that guy over here. Whoops, there we go. We got payment history. So payment history is how you've paid your previous loans on time. So late, if you get a late payment that's over 30 days late, your credit score will drop very quickly. The amount owed. And one thing to understand about the amount owed is that we look at the percentage of credit utilization. So everything uh, is going to be looked at in a percentage basis, as well as the total amount versus the amount of the minimum payments. So if you have, say, a $1,000 credit card, the amount that you carry as a balance or the amount that's on there at the time that the credit report is pulled how can influence how the score is calculated. So if you have a $300 balance on a $1,000 card, that's better than a $900 balance. The worst is when there is more uh, owed than the amount of credit, so over the limit. So uh, the longer you have the credit history, the better, so that the longer you have good payment history, your credit score goes up. One of the most common questions I get asked when we're talking about credit is how does pulling my credit affect 
my score. Well, I may drop it a point or two at most unless, and this is in the new credit category, unless you're, you're trying to qualify for new revolving debt when your existing loans are unpaid. So when you're qualifying to buy a home, I want you not to get your credit pulled for any auto loans or any revolving or credit card store cards, financing, you know, don't finance the vet bills, don't finance the uh, hearing aids, uh, don't finance anything, no installment loans for furniture, don't buy any new fridges or appliances until after closing. Uh, these can impact the, the score, but it really has to do with revolving primarily. Uh, so mortgage inquiries, uh, you can have as many mortgage inquiries in the 14 days surrounding the first mortgage pull, and they all count as one. So the fact that you have different mortgage companies pulling your credit is not going to impact your score negatively. It's called rate shopping, and they changed the algorithms years ago to account for rate shopping. Uh, it also works for car loans, too. Let's say you went out on a, a long weekend, holiday weekend, to a bunch of car dealers, and you asked them, you, weren't, you didn't go to the credit union or the bank ahead of time, and you said, I want to get pre-approved for some financing. What kind of financing deals do you offer here at the dealership? They're going to have to run your credit to determine that. But when you go from one dealer to the next on that weekend, it does not punish you and punish your score. You're going to get the same scores coming back each time. So we call that rate shopping, so new credit. So types of credit used, so if you've got tons of different cards and you're just not using your credit uh, scores uh, wisely, then it can, uh, it can negatively impact the score. So, all right, common credit problems. So, uh, and uh, none of these get revealed. We'll just kind of review them as we go over. So uh, we do have some other resources and webinars and videos about credit as well. So if you're interested in that, look for information or reach out to us about credit as we go into greater depth and consultation about how to, how to fix credit issues. So, but basically, if you've got multiple different credit cards that are kind of used up or maxed out, that's not good. If we've got new credit, uh, uh, we're trying to get new credit when those existing loans are unpaid. What the credit scoring algorithm recognizes is that we're essentially uh, trying to borrow money uh, to pay the, uh, the, the minimum payments. So if we've got sloppiness or a pattern of late payments, uh, that's not good. Negative events, and we'll talk about this, those might be bankruptcies, Chapter 7, Chapter uh, 13 workouts, or uh, credit counseling, uh, judgments, collections, charge-off, or foreclosures and short sales. None of these are uh, always going to stop us, uh, but there are certain waiting periods for certain negative events like foreclosures, short sales, and bankruptcies. So each of those things we look at on a case-by-case -case basis, and uh, I want to tell you that uh, it is more and more common, so don't feel uh, bad uh, you know, looking at in the past and say, well, I really screwed it up. Uh, just say, well, how can we make it better going forward? So, all right, solving a credit problem. So, one of the things as you're watching this, if you don't know what your credit report looks like, the f one of the first things you should do is get a copy of all three credit scores and all three credit reports for all three credit bureaus. There are three credit bureaus. It's not listed here on the screen. They are Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian. And uh, what, what some studies have found, and I found it to be true as well, is that uh, credit reports do contain errors. They did a study back, uh, it's going back eight years or so ago, but 79% uh, uh, of credit reports contained errors, and 25% or one in four had serious enough mistakes that it would impact the rate offered or the eligibility for a home loan or for other types of credit. 25%, that is insane. And if you think that that's crazy, I can tell you, Scouts honor that that is true, that we do have a fair amount of credit reports that have issues. The biggest one I saw recently was where the one of the bureaus had the wrong Social Security number, and but was reporting two credit reports in one. In other words, they take a, 
uh, conservative approach. If they've, they, if they've got all this data, they report it all, and it was reporting her credit report and about 20-some different trade lines, including a ton of student loans with all these lates, and, and the credit score was over 120 points lower on that one report compared to the other two. So we've seen very, uh, you know, crazy, serious mistakes. We want to get those things figured out ahead of time. Don't go shopping for homes. Say, oh, oh my gosh, you found the perfect home. Monday, it's like, okay, let's get pre-approved. And then you've got something that's going to take weeks or months to repair on your credit report. So you want to obtain a credit report, review it. If you don't want to have your scores, you can go to annualcreditreport.com. I do encourage you to get the scores and I encourage you to get uh, scores that you have to pay for or work with a lender or broker to get real scores. So we, we offer free credit reports as part of pre-approving pre borrowers so we can get one for you. Uh, we want to review any unnecessary credit. Don't close anything. We might want to look at paying off or paying down debts, resolving any unpaid or lates, dispute any errors that are there with the three credit bureaus, but not, not senseless disputes. If it's an actual problem, we want to we want to you know deal with it, and don't pay any collections as you go to get pre-approved. We want to um, we actually and this is very non-intuitive. If you have a collection, you don't want new activity on that collection, so we want to try to pay it and pursue deletions. So per, a deletion means an accept, in return for paying the collection, either a part or in full, they're going to delete it and show it uh, correctly on the report. So a couple things to build credit, you know, we talked about a uh, pattern of late payments or, or sloppiness. One of the things I always recommend is set, setting up electronic bill payment and pay things on time, pay things early and often. <laughs> so uh, if you don't have a ton of credit and your credit score is not showing or it's not high enough, we might be able to get a small loan at a, a depository institution, a bank or credit union using your savings account as collateral. Uh, you might be able to get a credit card and use it minimally, charge some gas, pay it off, charge some gas or groceries, pay it off. I'm not recommending running up any big bills. Uh, apply for a secured credit card if we've got bad credit and we don't think that we can be approved for a different loan. Secured credit card is where you might put two or three hundred dollars into a account and they give you a credit card in that amount, a two or three hundred dollars. And the fees are high but they do report to the credit bureaus and allow you to build positive uh, history. Uh, we've had situations where, um, you know, the husband or wife has a, a decent credit score, but the, the spouse doesn't have any credit. And they literally aren't pulling a score on one or two bureaus or on any bureaus. And we go out and get them a secured card, come around three or four months later, they now have a credit score. And we satisfy the requirements to get approved for the mortgage because of the, the the husband's credit and, tra and trade history or the spouse's or, or wife in, in some cases, and that the secured credit card gets us the credit score that we need to, to be approved. And some loan programs do, do allow uh, one borrower not to have a credit score and, and so forth, but it's on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, so another thing is to apply uh, with a co-signer. We don't want to go out and get on a bunch of authorized accounts. Um, they are, uh, although that can sometimes benefit your your credit score and give you a, a credit history. If you're uh, 30 years old and you've got a credit card from American Express that started in 1981, uh, well, <laughs> you know, the mortgage underwriter is going to know that that's not your credit history and ask to have that removed and have your credit report rescored. Anyway, getting into a little depth there on credit, but it's very, very important. So.